Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of representing ratios and rates. This is standard 6.5a in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 51 off the 2016 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have Sylvia making pink paint, and she has a ratio of seven cups of white to three cups of red. So which table shows the possible values of W? There's our W right there. It's going to be white up at the top of each of these to red. So since we have these tables here working from top to bottom, let's go ahead and make our ratio. So we've got seven white and that's going to be 3 red. We'll make it look like that. Remember that we can uh, write ratios a few different ways. We can say 7 white, 2, 3 red. We can also use a colon. But honestly, sometimes the easiest way to look at a ratio is to think of it as a fraction. Just because we know how we can make equivalent fractions and we can do all kinds of things with fractions. So what we could do is we can take this 7 and 3 and we could just make some equivalent fractions, right? So we could just multiply uh, by 2 over 2 and then we can multiply by 3 over 3 and so on and we can just kind of see what other fractions we get and where they show up. So that's going to be 14 over 6 and so all of these start, I'm just going to put check marks, all of these start with 7 over 3. Just think of these as fractions. So we're good, 7 over 3. So 14 over 6 pops up here. Uh, let's see what happens if we do 7, I'm just going to do 7 third times 3 thirds. We always make equivalent fractions by multiplying a numerator and denominator that are the same because that means they're equal to 1. 2 halves is equal to 1, 3 thirds is equal to 1. So that's 21 ninths. So I've got that there. And let's see what happens if I We've got 7 thirds times 4 fourths, and that's going to give me 28 twelfths. Well, it looks like that I've got these up here at C, but that doesn't mean that A, B, and D are wrong. We need to take a look at some of these options here. So let's see, how do I get from... Let's take a 7 thirds, and they say that is equal to 49 ninths. So how do I get from 7 thirds to 49 ninths? Uh, look at what we do here. So 7 times 7 makes 49, and 3 times 3 make 9. So I bet you they're just multiplying by 3 all the way across. And look, that's, look how big these get here. By the end, we get this really big, 2,401 over 81. Well, that doesn't work because even though they are 7 thirds, when we're making equivalent fractions, and since we're looking at our ratio as a fraction, we need it to make equivalent fractions, we cannot multiply the numerator and denominator by different numbers. They need to be equal. They need to be equal to 1. So that's not going to work. Let's see what happens to B here. So B, we've got 7 thirds, and it's going to equal 8 fourths. And how do we do that? Well, we can't multiply anything to get to 7 to 8. Oh, but look at what they did. Just added. That is not how we get to equivalent fractions. First off, you don't add like this. You only multiply straight across. So they just try to plus 1, but that just changes these fractions and these ratios. So that is not going to work. And then our C here is we've got 7 thirds, and we've got 6 fourths. Oh, that's strange. Look, it's, it's taking away 1 from the top, and then it's adding it back to the bottom. So look, we're doing this again. We're taking away 1, we're adding 1, and that's going to get us to 5, 5. That's also strange. We don't subtract 1 and then add 1. What we do is what we did over here. We multiply by fractions that are equal to 1. So the answer is not A, B, or D. Our answer is C.